This video is on redundancy. Redundancy essentially means backup. In a cyber-based world, redundancy is critical. One needs to create multiple resources that perform the same function and ensure primary system can be replaced with the backup during failures. It's part of the resilience strategy that can assist your company in reducing risks, financial impact, and reputational damage. Let's talk about the three areas that you're going to be tested on the Security Plus exam. Power, network, and disk. Without power, nothing would be turned on. During normal operations, a company would usually have dual power source for critical systems like servers, meaning two different power supplies the power, usually 50-50. This is known as redundant mode because if one power source goes down, the other one will go from supplying 50 to 100. Then we have UPS, an interruptible power supply. It's a device that allows a system to keep running for short time when power is interrupted. Basically a system that supplies enough power to keep it going for a little bit. Old UPS doesn't have a network card or other means of remote access, which means that it is not directly vulnerable to cyber attack. However, new UPS has network card, which opens up vulnerability. Let's talk example. UPS powering a PLC, programmable logic controller, responsible for controlling a key controlled substance mixing process on a biochemical production line may be subject to outside sabotage through its unsecured SNMP HTTP network interface. UPS connect to the company's Ethernet network for the purpose of remote monitoring and management could be compromised through the collusion between inside employee and a hacker outside the company. The unsecured UPS IP address could allow UPS to shut down and restart it remotely to cover thefts of small amount of control substance. Next we have generator. Generator is a machine that usually produces electricity from fuel. Generators can usually power an entire building. Generators are critical when you apply it to critical infrastructure. A central control scheme is commonly used in traditional power systems with a single controller center that collects information from and sends control commands to all agents. Distributed control is preferred over central control because of dependability, scalability, and flexibility. Local controllers in distributed control, on the other hand, have access to both local and neighbor information, making them vulnerable to cyber attack. By launching FDI attacks, a malicious entity could disrupt data exchange between neighboring local controllers. Lastly, for power, we have managed power distribution units. Advanced power distribution units, or PDUs, give system admins more control options, protect circuitry, and optimize energy allocation. It can provide you live warnings of potential circuit overloads and these metering devices include both floor mounted power distribution units for converting raw power into low capacity feeds and smaller devices for distributing power with multiple appliance connections. Some power distribution units have LAN network access allowing admins to control electrical loads and schedule shutdowns from afar and power distribution units assist in balancing costs in order to meet energy management targets. Next, let's talk networks. We got network load balancers. Load balancers take the load and distributes it among various resources. The load balancer is able to provide fault tolerance and has very fast convergence. Then we have the network interface car teaming. It is a common method of grouping a physical network adapters in order to improve performance and redundancy. The primary advantage of NIC teaming are load balancing and failover without the requirement for multiple physical connections. Lastly, we have the disk area. First, we got a redundant array of independent disks. It is a system of data storage that uses multiple hard disk drives to store data. A variety of different storage techniques can be used to achieve different levels of redundancy, error recovery, and performance. Basically, it is used to increase the reliability of storage disks. It takes the data that is commonly stored on a disk and sends it to many others keeping the data stored in various places. It increases the speed of data recovery too because multiple disks are busy recovering data rather than a single disk. Here's some terminology used in relation to RAID. First we got strapping where data is spread over several drives. We got mirroring where data is replicated across several disks. We got parity known as checksum. Parity is a determined value that is used to recreate data mathematically. There are various rate levels offered to fulfill requirements of different applications. Here's a table list of rate modes. And lastly, we got multipath. This combines multiple IO paths between server nodes and storage errors into a single device. 
These I.O. paths are physical SAN connections that may consist of multiple cables, switches, and controllers. Oh, <laughs> man.